Welcome back to another back testing session where I go over my favorite trades. I don't like to trade the first five minutes of the day. We're gonna whip it up. So let's just see what kind of morning it is. We got some rangy uh, movements going sideways. The EMA is going sideways. It dipped down a little bit, but you know, got a little bit of a middle finger pattern going here. A little pop up, a little drop back down. It's kind of coming back up to the moving average, slightly above it. First 5, 10, 20 minutes of the day usually is just tug of war. And it is not a good feeling getting in and then being in profit right away and then having it rip away from you. And then you can go and tilt right away. And even if you do make profit right away, it's just luck. By that, I don't. Turn around. All right, so I truly believe you need to train your eyes to see the good setups and you need to trade what you've trained your eyes to see. So what do you think? You think this is another good opportunity to buy a pullback and we just continue up? Based on what the five minute candle is looking like here. All right, what do you think is gonna happen here? Look at the one minute, look at the five minute, look at the structure of the five minute. We can zoom in a little bit. Okay, here it is right here. Here's the one minute. We're just hovering right here on the average price does it look like it wants to rip back up and do a uh this be a pullback to continuation up or does it look like it's failing okay these are the questions i'm always asking myself is it failing or is it pulling back and continuing in the direction that it was doing previously all right i'm looking for people in pain these candlesticks are not just candlesticks. They're people in pain. Yes, there's robots too trading, but big money, big pain. Looking for traders in pain when they're going to exit. And my way of trading is I'm not worried about getting the very best possible price and making the most profit. My goal in my trading style is to get the trade in my favor, in profit right away. And I want it to start making money right away. I hate being in drawdown. I hate chopping around. I hate watching my trade go up and down and drawdown and profit and all of this type of shit, right? I hate this. This is what I hate. This is what it looks like on the five minute. Okay. Can't really tell who's in pain and who's not in pain here. It's just unclear. These moments of clarity, to me anyways, they come few, just a few times a day. Sometimes it's just one time a day. Sometimes it's no time a day. Sometimes you just get this all day and it just come down here a little bit and it goes up here a little bit and it goes down here. And there and there. I'm going to slow it down here. You know, I'm just going to slow it down. Slow it down. I was listening to Brooks Kepka, who's the leader in the Masters tournament right now. And he's winning. And he says a lot of other golfers, whenever they start to get in the lead... Or whenever they're having a difficult time, their minds are speeding up. And he says he used to be like that. But in his interview, he was saying that his when he's in the moment, he's kicking butt. And he's got a lot of major championships. He says, for him, everything slows down. It's just, he's just in the moment. It's slow. So we're going to slow it down here. I'm going up. We're going down. Somebody in pain. I'm always looking for pain. I'm not worried about best possible price. Whenever I start to worry about best possible price, I'm gonna catch the bottom, I'll catch the top. What happens is I get lots of frustration. And in the book from Jesse Livermore, he says, you don't get paid extra for being wrong for a while. You don't get paid extra for being wrong first, in the beginning. You don't get paid extra. Does that make sense? You don't get paid extra for being wrong, holding and drawdown for a while. All right. He likes when he was a big time hotshot trader back in the day and his trading methods are still relevant to today because it's all just trading psychology, human behavior. It hasn't changed much since then. It's still going on today. And he likes to be in the money right away, too. And so that's what I'm trying to uh, share here is I like to be in the money. I'm, li I'm looking for these these running trades. This just go in my favor. So I'm going to leave it here. What? Is going on who do you think's in pain if you're seeing this are you thinking this is a good opportunity to buy it could be there's always a 60 40 chance of every trade opportunity i believe kind of like what al brooks talks about 
Okay, you can see here in the, in the lower time frame what's going on under the hood. Bulls came up and they failed to get above the one minute 20 EMA. Okay, it's slowing down here. It's going only at 60%. What do you think in here? This could be a trend line bounce, right? It could be. Could be one of these. But it's looking less like that to me. Just to me, anyways. To me, it's looking like bulls are failing here. And these red candles are looking pretty thick. Okay, I'm always looking for big candles. Big candles mean big opportunity. Big opportunities for panic dumps and squeezes on the bulls. Looking for momentum. Who's got the momentum here? Could you jump in here and make money? Would this be such a dumb idea? How about let's try it? Let's try it. Oh, field. Yeah, you don't get the best possible. I probably would have jumped in here. You could have, right? It immediately went into profit. I call these instant profit trades. Just goes right into profit. You're just catching it as it's falling. Add on, I feel confident oh, these guys got it in them. You think these people got it? They're going to push it all the way back up? I mean, it could happen, right? But look how big this candle is. Whenever I see this, I'm scared it's going to grow and grow and grow and come all the way back down here, this little weak support right here. And after it broke the trend line, candle's big. This is what I'm thinking. This is what my eyes tell me. I don't know about your eyes. If I'm long and I see this big red candle forming, I'm getting out. This would probably been a better entry up here. As long as you're going with the momentum. I don't be trying to jump in front of the bus. The ship is sinking. People are looking for life vests, right? The people that bought up here, maybe they held thinking it was going to pull back. Maybe they added on to their uh, winning position. or, or their, Maybe they bought up here and they think, well, you know, this is a better entry. I will, you know, average down. Let's kind of bounce here off this and maybe the turn line. Or they're panicking out right now. I think they're panicking out. They're looking for life vests. They're trying to run for cover. They don't want to ruin their whole day, right? Because they know that if it comes all the way down here, they're hitting their max daily loss pretty much or pretty close to it on, on the day. They're going to have to jump off jump off the shift with their life vests and hope. You could just freaking throw your, your stop like stop loss like this, right? I don't, I'm scared of a bounce. But what you know? what's likely to happen when you do that? I mean, it could just go up and tag you out and you get nothing and then it goes all the way down to the floor without you. So that's why I don't usually like to do that. Maybe I'll reduce my risk to like this, give it some wiggle room. We'll see if any of these get close. What are your eyes telling you here? Is it telling you that it's going to keep going down or is this a good place to buy? Does this look like a good place to buy to you? To me, I mean, no, it does not. These people are in pain. The traders are looking to get out. They're trying to save themselves. And I'm trying to join the winning team, and I want the trade to go right in my favor. So that's these are like good good shorting opportunities, in my opinion. And you just see it just keeps going down. It's probably going to hit the test the bottom here, maybe even overshoot. Here, Tom says, "Do not use take." He does not use take profit, and he's like, "Why would I? Why would I use take profit? I don't know what it's going to give me. I want to give get as much as I can get from the market. Let it tell you where to take profit." Sometimes you got to take your profit early, but sometimes you can just hold and just squeeze the, uh, the market for all it has got. Get as much out of it as you can. Okay? This is... just for, Even just entering right here, 215, 214, whatever, all the way down here, that's, you know, 30-something points. And 600, almost 700 bucks. Just on 10 micros, one mini. You know, if you did two of these, 20, you'd be up over 1,000, 1,213. Add on to the winning. I love to add on. Perfect add on scenario here. You buy, uh, you short, add on, you add on, add on. You, you got to be off, obviously mindful of a bounce. You don't just want to jump in and add on to anything. Hey, I'm in a winner here. Let me add on. Let me, hey, Travis says add on everywhere. He's looking to add on to every winning trade. No, that's not what I'm saying. Only if the conditions are right. You make big profits, starting off with small amounts is the goal. All 
All right, let's speed it up. Let's see. Let's get this trade over with. All right. Show us what's gonna happen. Uh, let's look. I like to look when I see a big dump or a big pump. I'm usually expecting one failed attempt sometimes, maybe two failed attempts. Sometimes the second attempt is the the reversal, you know, like a double bottom or a double top. But usually the first time it's a weak attempt. Maybe this could be considered the first time. I don't know. Maybe this is the first attempt down here. Could be a potential bounce area, what I call the bat wing, where it comes up, comes down, makes like a bat wing, and starts to rally back up. Okay, it's coming back to the what I call the micro pullback area. Up, oh, failing the micro pullback area. So it'd be a micro pullback for the bears to come up, test, and then fail. And this is this is a good sign that the micro pullback is occurring. Could go even further. Here we are, testing the low, breaking the lows. This be a good time to start to think about taking some profit. Put it like I would do. Uh, it, it's at four hundred percent, so it bounced up a lot quicker than would normally happen in the regular day, but something like this. Kind of hug it down. Stop filled. Boom, stop filled. Above the 20 EMA here on the one minute, and it's making new highs on the one minute. First candle to make a one minute new high, and, and so forth. And it's time to get out. Put it somewhere right here. It could come up here and tag it out and then come flushing right back down. So that's why when I do it like this, say if I have to leave the desk or whatever, I put it like this. And sometimes it's annoying. It'll come up and hit your break even for a small win or a nothing burger. And then it'll go <laughs> falling to the floor without you and you come back. And that's just part of trading. All right, so. I wouldn't even be looking to buy right here. Not until I at least see some kind of a first attempt, maybe a failed attempt. We're going to, after we take this trade here, we're going to zoom it up a little bit and we'll see when's a good time to take the next trade on this. I'm not going to zoom in too far ahead. We're kind of... Alright. This, this would be where I would start to think about getting out. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm typically looking for if I'm shorting. And I'm, I'm seeing the real weakness of the bulls and the bears are just totally in control. You could even short here, 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 and you make money. Look, there is no green. Only bears are making money. Who's making money? Bears making money. Look, I even got out early. Look at this. That's how much I left on the table there. 10 more points. 15 more points left on the table. And that's why I don't usually use take profit, but just to showcase, hey, this is an area where I might consider taking profit. Yeah, I don't always get every inch of the market that it wants to offer, but I try to. All right, we are going to speed it up here and go to 